Welcome back, everyone. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to take our wind chill calculator program, and we are going to en enforce uh, a model, which is the, um, the model view controller. Uh, and we're going to apply it to our BMI calculator to organize it, to have a sort of a separation of concerns. And what we're going to do is the view is already being dealt with in our res files under layout, uh, content main, the view we can see right here when I double click it. Um, and this is an XML file and it has just, you know, what the user is going to interact with. So anything the user interacts with is the view. And so uh, they're going to interact with temperature, wind speed, get wind chill, get results. So um, Android Studio has the view all nailed down. They call them, you know, layouts or uh, views. And so that's kind of nice. And then, uh, but if we go to our main activity, remember in Android development, any activity is like something, you know, like it's basically the controller is what it is. So in a model view controller, the activity is the controller. And the way they define it is you've got um, the view is what the user interacts with. The model deals with all of the data. How do we model it? How do we communicate um, with databases? Uh, it handles that. It handles form validation. It handles business logic. And the activity, the main activity in particular, it really should serve as a controller. In other words, it should connect between the two. And already it's starting to do that, but I've removed some code, and you'll see in just a moment. Um, so as a controller, we create our components that we're going to be interacting with. And then in our onCreate method, as you may recall, we sort of connected our UI components. So as an activity, as a controller, it's doing exactly what it should do. It's saying, all right, uh, this edit temp is going to get uh, and connect our view, right, with the data. And so we have to be able to connect to the view and access what the user does. So that is performing the role of controller right here as exactly as it should. And um, as a, then we have a button. And uh, we have a click listener that when it's clicked, we want to get results. And if you think about it, as a controller, that's fine. What the controller is going to do is it, we, it should connect to the model. It should get our information from the view, run it through the model, and let the model do enforce all of the logic that it should. And then in the re end, we're going to send results. So theoretically, between this setting temp to zero or setting results to results and getting the text, the model should pretty much do all of the work. And basically the model should look at all of the values, try to calculate when, uh, yeah, wind chill factor. And if it's able to send us back the results and then the controller will just display it. So we've basically removed a lot of that logic that we had before and we just removed it. We're going to apply it to the model. So in order to do that, we have to create a class for the model. So in order to create a class, I'd like you to go where you see the main activity folder right there. There's two. One is for test. And you, if you look at it, it says Android test. The one above does not. This is the one we want. We're going to right click on it. We're going to choose new Java class. So this is going to create a blueprint for the model which is going to deal with all the data. So you choose that, and for the name, we're going to give it model. And in Java programming, as well as many other programming languages, anything that's a class should be capitalized. It should start with a capital letter. So it's capital M model. And we click OK, and I'm going to zoom in on here. In fact, not only am I going to zoom in on here, but I'm going to try to do a split view. And I think I can do this. I can split vertically. And I think on the right, I can look at model, and on the left, I can look at the main activity. So there you go. So we can now look at two files side by side, and this is going to be helpful as we work through this. Okay. So for the model, we're going to have to call some functions, and, and I'm actually going to use the controller to test out 
our functions, or in this case, our methods. And so, um, so just for a while, we'll be doing some code in here, but eventually it's all going to go over to the model. What I have here is a window of just some of my thinking about how we're going to validate our form for the wind chill. So we need to validate the wind and the temp, and then uh, eventually we're going to calculate wind chill. But before we calculate, we want to make sure, for example, wind and temperature are not empty. So we thought about model. We could have a method that will be part of the model itself, and it will determine whether something is empty or not. And that would go for an edit text being empty or not. So we can pass it in an edit text, and we can see is it empty or not. Um, and here I said string input uh, string, but I think I'm going to do it instead as an edit text. And it's going to return a Boolean. It's either going to return true or false. If it's empty, it will be true. If it's not, it will be false. So let me work out what the pseudocode would be for that. Okay, so this is how it's going to look. Getting input field, well, uh, is empty is a method anyway, so that's where we're getting it here. So really the logic is just if the length of the input field is zero, that means it's empty, we return true because it is empty. Otherwise, we return false. Okay, and what's nice about having it be a Boolean value is that we can throw that into an if statement. So we could say if is empty, we could like send back a message saying, you know, you need to fill out that form. If, uh, and we could do a while loop, we could like keep looping until someone puts something in. And so, so uh, these kinds of methods, uh, Boolean methods are very handy for looping and for checking. So let's do that in our model now. So we go over to the model, and the first thing we need to do is we need to write some methods for the model. And, of course, a method is just a function that belongs to either an object or a class. In this case, um, it belongs to the model class. It's going to be public because if we don't make it public, then we're not going to be able to call it from over in main activity. The other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to set it to be static. Okay. By making it static, um, it means it's part of the model class in general. And you'll see what it looks like when we run it. And then it's going to be Boolean because it's going to return true or false. And then we write the name is empty. Now in it, we're going to receive an edit text field. Okay, and so we're, I'm going to move this over a little bit here so we have a little bit more room. So, and then um, one of the first things you're going to see whenever you do something where you put Boolean or int or some kind of a return type, this is the type of data that we're going to send out. It, this is going to stay underlined until it sees us returning a value. It needs a return statement. So we're just going to check if, and then, in it, and then the structure, of course, in Java is our if statement should look like that else it's an is, if else block and so what's our if check well we're going to get our field and we're going to get the length right there if field dot length is equal to zero return true because it is empty if, if if by the way so the the length of the field is how many characters have been entered in and if no characters are entered in that means it's empty otherwise Return false. And now notice that red underline is gone because no matter what code path it takes, it's going to have a return statement. And it's going to return true or false. That's why we put Boolean on there. I think we're ready to test this out. So we're going to test it. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit on here. I'll leave it uh, so you can still see it. But on here, let's see if we can test this sucker out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little if, check this out, we're going to do model dot. Hey, check that out. Model is the class, is empty is the method, is empty. We're going to send it uh, edit temp dot. Uh, oh, wait, we just have to set it edit temp. 
And then I'll just put, uh, okay, so if it's empty, I'm just going to put results plus equals, and it will just say temperature is empty, like so. I'll put a little period, okay? So remember, we have our results here, and we just test out. Model is empty. We send it edit temp. And that's all I'm going to do just to test it out. Actually, we'll do another thing, and I'll just put an else statement in here. Otherwise, it's results plus equals temperature is not empty. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and run this sucker and test it out. Did I do it right? Get wind chill. Oh, look, temperature is empty. Give it a value at three. Temperature is not empty. Woohoo. Wow, that's amazing. Now, if I uh, was much better at unit testing on Android <coughs> Studio, I would have written some unit tests for that. I still haven't figured out how to get unit tests to work on Android Studio, Studio so sue me. If I ever figure it out, I'll put a video on it. You can all learn. All right, but anyway, we got that working right. There's our first model static method. All right, everybody. Now what we need to do is let's just check to see if whatever uh, value we have is in the correct range. So I'm going to make it public also. It's going to be static because it's part of the class called model, and it's going to return a Boolean value, true or false. Is in range is what we're going to call it. So this is kind of what it looks like. What do we need to do is in range? First of all, uh, we're gonna we're not even gonna worry about edit uh, text. We're just gonna use uh, integers, data, whatever we pull from the field. If we can convert it to a number, we'll call it data. We need another integer. We'll call it lower, and another integer. We'll call it upper. So those are our arguments, our formal parameters, shall we say, for the is in range method. Now, here's what we need to do is uh, we need to just check. It's an if, okay? And then if it's uh, data, first of all, we need to make sure that it is greater than or equal to the lower range, whatever that may be. But, you know, for example, let's say we're going between 0 and 100. Uh, if the number is 50, then 0 is greater than the lower range, which was 0. But if the number is, say, 150, it's going to be true that it's greater than or equal to lower, but it is not less than or equal to the upper range. So we need to actually meet both requirements. So we're going to use the logical AND operator. It's two ampersands. And then it's just data less than or equal to upper, like so. If that is the case, we are in range. We're going to return true because, yes, we're in range. Else we're going to return false. Return. Return false. And notice there's no little red underline here anymore because in both code paths we return a Boolean value. So let's just go ahead and test that out. In fact, one of the things that we could do is we could talk about it. Well, we'll just keep it separate. If model dot is in range and let's just forget about the other value. Let's just go ahead and try 50. And is it between 0 and 100? Okay, so that's how we check. It's going to return true or false. True if it's within range, false if it's not. So we're going to do an if else block, and we're going to just kind of put a results plus equals. Maybe a little backslash add new line. Um, and then temp it, whoops, temp. Temp is also in range. Else results plus equal temp is not in range. Like so. Let's go ahead and run it. See the results. Before we run it, let me just point out the fact that it doesn't matter what any of the fields have in them, any of the edit text. 
We're just running to see if, if 50 is between 0 and 100, and that's how we're going to test it out. Okay, let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. And temperature is uh, empty. Temp is also in range. You know what? Um, let me change that real quick. Uh, I'll keep that open. Uh, first of all, we already tested this. I'm just going to get rid of that at this point. And then the other thing I want to do is just do a quick test um, and make it 50 is between 0 and 100. And then 50 is not between 0 and 100. All right. Uh, we'll run it out. We tested it at 50. Let's go ahead and test it at negative. So let's find one that's not going to be within range. And we'll put on here. And so this should run a false, so it should trigger the L. So it should say negative 50 is not in between. Let's test that one out and see if that's working. And then I think we're ready to move on. All right, let's test it out. By the way, it doesn't matter what we put in here. We just click it, and negative 50 is not between 0 and 100. So we figured it out how it works. Um, we we're kind of low on time, and I've already gone over what I like to do. So in the next time we come back, we'll just take a look. We'll just keep working on our data validation, trying each one out. I'll leave you with the two functions if you want to pause and take a look at it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.